you want to know what the most popular neutral paint color for furniture is? I've got you covered. Today I'm transforming a $25 thrift store MCM dresser painted in one of the most popular neutral colors out there. So just let me get set up and I'll be right back. Let's start. Here's the fun part. I found this Crawler MCM Tallboy at my local thrift store selling for $25 and I had to pick it up because seriously it was looking and smiling at me just asking me to take it home. Once I got it down to my studio I saw that some of the wood was a little banged up and there were a few chips in the veneer as you can see here on the top drawer. But Crawler was an established furniture manufacturer so what a lucky find for the price. Uh, it's a great piece to salvage and give new life to. I started by giving this dresser a really good cleaning and I used white lightning in my spray bottle and a large sponge. And after it was cleaned, I made sure to wipe it down with a clean sponge to remove any residue. For the larger scratches and missing veneer and hardware holes, after I took out the old hardware, of course, I mixed up some Bondo all-purpose putty. Uh, I've said this before, I like using the all-purpose putty Bondo rather than the wood fill Bondo. Both work amazing. The wood fill Bondo is a little pricier and I don't notice any difference. Uh, so it's up to you which one you use, but both are phenomenal. I have a full video on how to mix Bondo and how to use it for repairs, which I'll include in the cards above and also in the description down below. Once the Bondo was all mixed, I filled in the old hardware holes and again, the large missing veneer areas. For the smaller little nicks and dings, in this dresser I ended up using Dixie Bell's brown mud and the reason being is because it sands very very easily so rather than use the heavy-duty Bondo uh, it's so much easier to use uh, an easy to sand wood filler Bondo dries within 10 minutes and it's ready to sand. However, most wood fillers take a little longer than 10 minutes, most definitely. Uh, so what I did was I took my heat gun and I dried the wood filler as best I could. And then I just let it sit for an hour or two before I came back down to sand. To prep for the primer, I gave the full body of this piece a scuff sanding. I also sanded down the Bondo putty that I had applied and you'll notice at the side of the drawer somebody had written their initial and name in a black sharpie. Uh, now an easy way to get rid of that black sharpie was just to sand it right down and while I was at it since I was sanding the outer body I sanded the sides of the drawers to get rid of the sharpie I decided to sand the inside of the drawers to make them look spanking brand new as well. All the areas that I couldn't get were with my Bosch sander, I did by hand, especially the base and the little grooves within the base of this piece. This piece was brought from my sanding room back into my paint room. I wiped all the dust off with a tack cloth and now it was time for priming. I used my very favorite BIN or Bin Shellac Base Primer. This primer covers up any bleed through and is a bonding primer as well. So the paint sticks to it really, really nicely. I like using a foam brush. I get them from the dollar store, a pack of four for, I think it's $1.50 if I'm not mistaken. And I use a Dixie cup to pour it onto a paper plate. And then I use the roller to apply it. Now I know a lot of people have tried this shellac base primer and they find it a little difficult difficult to work with, but once you get the hang of it, it's super easy. I have a full tutorial uh, that I will link in the cards above and also in the description down below on how to use BIN shellac base primer. Another great thing about this primer is it dries in like 20 minutes. It dries super fast. So I mean, if you're pumping out a lot of furniture like I am, uh, there's no downtime to this, pri to this uh, primer whatsoever.
And after the first coat was dried, I actually used green painter's tape to mask off some of the inside. And then I took a really good look at this piece and any little dings, nooks and crannies that I missed with the wood fill the first time around, I went in and I filled it with uh, the Dixie Belle mud once again. The next day when I went down, the wood fill was dry. I gave it another light sanding, another coat of primer. And now for the fun part. Here's where the paint comes in. To kick off the new year, I went with Dixie Belle's most popular selling color, which is drop cloth chalk mineral paint. It's a lovely linen white with gorgeous warm undertones, and it's the perfect neutral for any furniture makeover, whether it be for furniture you want to paint in your own home or for your own house, or if you're like me, you're painting furniture and selling it. I always find this gorgeous color sells really quickly. I I painted two coats of drop cloth using my medium oval brush and a fine spray mister. And misting my brush before dipping it into the paint allows the paint to glide onto the dresser and prevents brush strokes. This is not just a gorgeous color. This paint is really, really lovely to work with. I just wanted to take a little time to talk about sanding in between coats because I've gotten a few questions on the SI blog and uh, via email and social and a lot of people think that sanding in between coats is a big hassle or maybe it's not needed but I just want to say that if you give your piece a quick sanding in between your primer coats or in between your painted coats or even your if you're spraying between each spray it it makes a world of difference. It really does. And it really literally takes two minutes. I'm doing this in real time. Uh, I just take my time with it. And as you can see, I take, uh, this is a 220 sanding pad or sanding sponge. And I just wipe it down really lightly as if I was wiping my kitchen counter. Uh, and I just go over it once that's all you need. It just knocks down any any little dust particle uh, or any paint that's not even with the surface. Uh, then what you do is you remove all the dust with a brush and or tack cloth or damp cloth and then you're ready to apply the next coat. And really for the two, three minutes it takes to sand in between coats, it is so well worth it. You will notice a big, big difference in your painted furniture. So I really like the look of the bare base and legs or feet, if you want to call them, in contrast with the drop cloth paint. So I decided to keep the base looking very, very natural. I sanded down the existing finish on the feet and the base and then I used a Dixie Bell's water-based Au Naturel stain. Uh, this stain is super easy to use. Uh, you can water it down with water because as I mentioned, it is water-based. You just shake it, I, I put it in a little uh, plate and I applied it with a very inexpensive chip brush. Working in sections, uh, after I applied it with the chip brush, I just took a blue shop cloth and I wiped everything back to give it the natural natural wood luck. Once everything was dry, it was time to protect what I have done here. So I took some Dixie Belle's clear coat in satin and I wanted to tint the clear coat just a touch for the first couple of coats. So I added a tiny little bit of drop cloth and then just a touch of water to thin it because I sprayed it through my paint gun. And here's a quick tip. When you're spraying your top coat or even your paint actually, uh, when you're mixing it, you, if you add about between 5 and 10% water just to 
thin it out before spraying. I like the consistency of a melted milkshake. As you can see here, I'm mixing it with the paint stick and you want the paint and or the top coat to come off the paint stick with some body. It, it should still have a lot of body to it, but it should look like a melted milkshake. Then you know that it should go through your sprayer perfectly fine. You just want to make sure that when you're spraying, it's not too watery because then you're going to end up with a lot of runs on your furniture. And you want to make sure that it's not too thick because then it's not going to apply smoothly to your furniture. So you really want to be careful that you have something in between. And I've always found that the consistency of a melted milkshake dripping off my paint stick is perfect. Once I had the consistency just right, I used a filter and put it into my paint cup getting ready to spray. I sprayed two coats of the tinted top coat onto this piece, of course, uh, making sure that it dried in between each coat. And I also gave it a super light sanding in between each coat as well. On the third coat, my last coat of top coat, I sprayed perfectly clear satin over it. It was not tinted at all. Once all that had dried, it was time for the finishing touches hardware and I found this gorgeous brushed brass hardware off Amazon uh, so I went ahead and I measured everything up on the drawers using this template which I find super helpful I'll leave this uh, link down in the description see more below if you guys want want to give it a try I think it's I bought it off Amazon for maybe six dollars but it's really really easy to use and very very handy when uh, drilling holes for your hardware. An issue I ran into with this gorgeous hardware is that the screws that they had sent um, with it did not fit. Uh, they were too short for these drawers, I guess, because the drawers were a little thicker. So then I took these, uh, what are they called? Breakaway screws and my Klein tool. And what you do is you, this Klein tool is fabulous actually. I can't tell you how much use I've gotten out of it over the years. So what you do is you take your breakaway screw, or it doesn't even have to be a breakaway screw. You can just put a longer screw in there that fits your hardware. Uh, obviously it's way too long at this point. So you screw it into this Klein tool and you have different size uh, sizes of holes depending on what screw you're using. You screw it in and then you snap it off at the exact length that is required to fit your hardware into whatever furniture you're putting it on. So I have to say again, this Klein tool has saved the day numerous times for me and I just love it. And again, I'll leave the link down below if you're interested in giving it a try. So that's how this dresser came together. And let's take a look at the before. And here's the after. I just love how classic and lovely this piece turned out. And I cannot wait to hear what you think. So I hope you love this drop cloth dresser makeover as much as I do. I think it turned out so beautiful. Please leave me a comment down below. I love reading each and every one of your comments. Also, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. You can also follow me on all my socials and over at salvagedinspirations.com where I have over 500 furniture painting tutorials teaching you how to make your furniture beautiful. Until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day and a fabulous week. Bye guys.